All right, guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this soon-to-be 90-degree something day here. It is Friday morning, March 26th out here in this undisclosed swamp with all the warnings about alligators, poisonous snakes, invasive weeds of course the hilariously uh titled airboat regulations out here but since it is friday morning your old fatigued chronicler of the collapse will uh do what he tries to do every friday morning since this is the easiest day of the week to be a uh, chronicler of the collapse of a planet because Friday is when we just go over here to mongabay.com and check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Mongabay who for over 20 years have been cataloging the the never ending uh, just beyond assaults on the planet. Uh, Manga Bay, you take the lifetime body of work of Rhett Butler. He is the, despite his occasional dips into apocaloptimism and hopium, Rhett Butler has done a, a, as much as any human being on the planet to chronicle the collapse of a planet. And uh, good for you, brother. And this is what Rhett and the rest of the folks have to share this week about what is going on on the planet while we are distracted with our various whatever. So I guess, is it finally official? Finally official, at least according to one new study, we, we, meaning humans, humans have turned the Amazon into a net greenhouse gas emitter. Finally, in a first-of-its-kind effort, scientists have calculated the balance of all natural and human-caused greenhouse gases coming in and out of the Amazon basin and found that the region is now a net emitter of greenhouse gases. In the new study, the scientists say human disturbances, hmm, and not natural greenhouse gas emissions are contributing to climate change. Carbon dioxide is not the only problem. Fires and drying out of seasonally flooded forests release large volumes of methane and nitrous oxide, which are even more potent greenhouse gases than CO2. Yes. The findings suggest that forests alone will not be enough to slow climate change as long as we continue burning fossil fuels. So I guess it is official. The Amazon jungle, which is, should be the single biggest carbon sink on the planet, is now officially uh, adding green all of the greenhouse gases instead of sucking them out of the air they are spewing them into it and you can draw your own uh conclusions between that story and this one even manga bay has several versions of this story so uh we're just gonna go through the first one palm oil plantations and their impacts have arrived in the Amazon. Yeah, so they, uh, on their weekly podcast, Manga Bay interviews three, uh, three folks down there in Brazil um, looking at investigative report that found the palm oil industry's growth in the Brazilian Amazon is driving the same deforestation and community conflicts of oil operations are responsible for in Southeast Asia. Do you think so? Here's another study looking at both 
above ground rivers and groundwater uh, and these indigenous reserves near these new palm oil plantations are contaminated with pesticides and herbicides used on nearby palm oil plantations. Uh, and then they look at this ongoing legal battle and going on for seven years trying to go up against uh, one of these palm oil companies and getting nowhere with it. Uh, anyway, let's move out of the Amazon rainforest. We're going to go over to Indonesia where we find an illegal leopard trade is thriving out of sight. Hmm. A new paper documents significant illegal trafficking of Javan leopards and Sunda clouded leopards in Indonesia. Yes, they uh, they officially uh, looking over you know ones that they have caught. We have 83 individual leopards. Uh, but the authors say that these numbers likely represent only a fraction of the true leopard trade, with both species of these leopards facing significant population declines. Any level of poaching and trading could tip the scales towards extinction, which is exactly where both of these leopards are headed is into oblivion thanks to humans. Okay. So, you know, I've been wondering, uh, as I'm sure all us Doomers have, you know, about this new military coup going on in, um, however you pronounce this country, Myanmar, it used to be called Burma. Uh, and take a wild guess what this means for our fellow Earthlings who are already uh, in bad enough shape. The February military coup in Myanmar has cast doubt, has cast doubt on the future of environmental protection efforts in the Southeast Asian country. Yes, activ activists and legal experts say environmental enforcement was already weak uh, uh, under under the uh, 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 under the government there you know before it was overthrown they cite a weak environmental impact assessment process lack of accountability for violators and a prioritization of development over conservation and that was the old boss uh, out with the old boss, in with the new boss. Despite their frustration with slow environmental progress under the old boss, experts say they now fear the situation will be far worse under the new military dictatorship. Do you think so? So anyway, uh, <clears throat> You know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, and I have to admit, I need to go over and watch this. Uh, so their YouTube video of the week, which you can find on Manga Bay's channel, is what is a planetary boundary? Manga Bay explains, so we can let uh, Rhett Butler uh, explain to us the nine ways that uh, the, the nine planetary boundaries, how many of those suckers have we already crossed? You know, people uh, think that climate change is the only planetary boundary. Uh, there are nine horses in this race. All right. <clears throat> Back to the Amazon rainforest. Nearly half of the Amazon's intact forest is on indigenous held lands. Uh, 
45% of remaining intact forests in the Amazon basin are located in indigenous territories. The forest occupied by indigenous communities in the region hold more carbon than all of the forest in either Indonesia or the Democratic Republic of Congo, home to the next two biggest swaths of, rain, of tropical rainforest outside of Brazil. Uh, and I think we all know what is going on with the indigenous down there in Brazil. We'll probably get back to that later in this report. Okay, but uh, as goes Brazil and Indonesia, let's go over to Papua New Guinea. Yes, uh, where we find this giant palm oil firm is clearing Papuan forest without indigenous consent. You will not believe this, guys that a palm oil conglomerate has been clearing the ancestral forest of indigenous tribes in Indonesia's Papua region without the locals' consent. Hmm. The, this environmental organization alleges that these planet eaters uh, has failed to obtain the local indigenous tribes consent to operate in the area which forms part of this project which is now slated to become the world's single biggest oil palm plantation in the middle of these indigenous territories out in uh, New Guinea. Uh, this, you know, this this palm oil guys uh, you know as you're as we're going through this list I, I just want you to think of what can you do uh, with your own personal uh, lifestyle and consumer choices to change the trajectory on any of this you know outside of uh, of boycotting palm oil but anybody who thinks that a few little uh, doomers boycotting palm oil is, is going to do a damn thing. You know, with no help from regular oil, uh, palm oil, it's, it's unbelievable. This, this crap, I, it pretty much did not exist uh, 30 years ago. Oh, Jesus. Anyway... Moving and not and again as always I'm only hitting about half of these uh, Stories oh, yeah, so we were Just a minute ago. I was talking about so we all know what's going on with the indigenous land defenders in Brazil and here we have Garani indigenous men brutalized in Brazilians expansion of violence talking about this big land dispute between the these these ranchers and uh, <clears throat> these Indians down in the Amazon uh, take a wild guess who's willing so what is the latest chapter violence flared yet again last week when three Garani Kiowa men were assaulted, they said, by gunmen from the large Carencia farm. Uh, the Garani say that intimidation of their community members has seriously escalated under the Jair Bozo Nero administration, which has shown hostility toward indigenous rights. Here is the, you know, this hilarious, I've, I've, I'm only going to spend a few seconds. You know, as I say, my one, my one minor complaint with Red and Manga Bay is, is there just, uh, I, 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 I don't know what it is, just continuing to believe this crap, this hopium crap. How about this one for the hopium-soaked story of the week from Manga Bay? Oil palm growers' misdeeds allow 
an opportunity to save West Papua's forest. Yes, an area of rainforest two and a half times the size of London sits inside of already demarcated oil palm concessions in Indonesia's West Papua province, but it can still be spared from being cleared. Yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh. All right. So what is going on with BlackRock Corporation? Two or three articles about BlackRock. Our, our buddies at BlackRock, we're just going to touch on this one. 81 indigenous leaders and environmental defenders slam BlackRock. An open letter, yes. A letter signed by indigenous leaders and environmental defenders from the Amazon, West Africa, Southeast Asia, and elsewhere blasts BlackRock for failing to hold companies in its investment portfolio accountable for deforestation and land grabbing. Quoting the letter, while BlackRock makes pledges to ask portfolio companies to cut emissions in the future, our forests are being raised, our land is being stolen, and our people are being killed today. Yes, the letter said, last week BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, published new guidelines related to, quote, natural capital and human rights. Earlier this month, BlackRock's former head of sustainable investing, imagine being the head of BlackRock's sustainable investing division, said the company's environmental practices amounted to, quote, greenwashing. I don't know if this fellow was fired or quit. Imagine imagine the former head of BlackRock Sustainable Investing Department claiming that BlackRock Corporation is trying to greenwash clueless morons. All right. Uh, again, I'm skipping through a lot of these. Uh, <clears throat> here it is. We, we just, you know, we go from palm oil to regular oil in the Wairani community. I think that's in Ecuador. Here is, you will not believe this one. In Indonesia, pulp and paper firms stoke demand that may, that may drive deforestation. Hmm. Would you believe that pulp and paper companies are expanding in Indonesia by building new mills, putting more pressure on existing pulpwood plantations to increase their production? Yes. According to a new report, this could reverse a decline, the, a declining trend of pulpwood-related deforestation in recent years already. I've got my, my BS uh, antenna raised over this claim that there has been a declining trend of pulpwood-related deforestation in recent years. Uh, but all that's getting ready to change as producers are now seen as likely to clear even more forest for plantations in order to meet the demand from the new mills. And here we go for the, uh, for the uh, next hopium-soaked knee slapper of the week. Activists, therefore, have called on the government to provide protection hmm, for all natural forest in Indonesia from such an expansion. Yes, I'm, I'm sure the Indonesian government is doing everything in their power to drop everything they're doing to put a halt to new 
paper and pulpwood expansion in what is left of the rainforest of Indonesia. Okay, we have her, and they're asking us a question in the headline Did you know that stump tailed macaques can go bald? All right. You know, uh, all of these knee slappers back to Indonesia. Study calls for a marine reserve inside a $500 million fishing hotspot in Indonesia. Okay, guys, what we're seeing here is an airboat being launched. All right, we got an airboat launching going on in a... All right, that's the beauty. It's a big red airboat. He's got a big red airboat on the back of his monster truck. It's a beautiful weekend starting. And he's going to get his monster truck. And look at that beautiful bright red airboat. All right. <clears throat> We're going airboating. We are going airboating in paradise. Yes, talking about how uh, they're going to set up a marine preserve right in the middle of uh, a 500 million dollar fishing ground in Indonesia. I'm sure that's gonna happen. All right, moving on. You will be shocked to find that a secretive group, a secretive group has been found to have cleared orangutan habitat in Indonesia. Yes, a new report has identified the secretive Nusantara Fiber Group as being responsible for the most deforestation by the industrial forest industry in Indonesia in the past five years. This secretive group has that they know of has cleared 64,200 acres of Indonesian rainforest, I guess, to make fiber. Uh, little is known about the group, but historical records suggest possible ties, possible ties to the pulpwood and palm oil conglomerate Royal Golden Eagle. Yes. <clears throat> Environmentalists have called for a halt to the deforestation, which has cleared habitat of the critically endangered Bornean orangutan, uh -huh. as well as the application of zero deforestation policies. I love it. This fellow is on his cell phone. He's sitting on an airboat. Uh, on the back of a a monster truck on his texting on his cell phone. Okay, so remember all of those CFCs, those ozone-eating CFCs that disappeared a few years ago? Well, guess where they went? They went into the ocean. Oceans helped absorb our CFCs. They are now going to meaning the oceans are now going to emit them back out. A new study suggests the ocean will begin emitting CFCs by about 2075. Hmm, do you think so? Climate change will likely exacerbate the process, turning the ocean into a source of CFCs earlier than expected. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good lord, where are we? I got time for a few more. Let's just hit the headlines since I realize I'm talking about to myself. Here is growing, we're going to go to the Okavango Delta and then Sub-Saharan Africa where we I uh, see growing concern over Okavango oil explorations. 
then we're going to go to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where Manga Bay is drawing dots uh, between pension and endowment funds linked to conflict-plagued oil palm and the DRC. All right, this Sunday, day after tomorrow, is the International Day of Forest. I think this fellow on his airboat is celebrating the International Day of Forest. Let's listen to this airboat. All right, another story on Black Rock. Uh, okay, from Black Rock to Anglo-American. Anglo-American Corporation will not rule out mining on indigenous lands in the Amazon. Anglo-American has up to 86 applications pending to mine on indigenous lands in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes, indigenous groups have demanded that Anglo-Americans stay off their lands and have denounced the death bill that could eventually open up their territories to mining. Oh, God, let's see more about oil palm moving into the Amazon. And uh, let's just end up here. Uh, as climate change brings more floods, mosquito numbers could swell. I noticed that the mosquito numbers in Crazy Crane Campground uh, are swelling now that summer has hit. Uh, but speaking of Crazy Crane Campground, I got more campers coming in tonight. So I have to wrap up this week's version of my ecological meltdown roundup rant. Uh, if you appreciate the job Rhett Butler is doing to keep you depressed and despondent uh, here on this beautiful spring day on the planet, please give this video a thumbs up and uh, go over there and subscribe to Manga Bay's YouTube channel while you were over here and then get out here and enjoy this gorgeous planet while you still can like these fellows are getting ready to do on their airboat. Bye guys.